Hariyam, Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha. Singers do it naturally. They understand that their voices, their bodies are instruments of music making. We can think of ourselves as instruments in so many different ways, regardless of what profession or relationship we are in. Great medical doctors see themselves as instruments of healing, and dedicated lawyers and judges can choose to be instruments of justice. This idea of being an instrument is understanding that the way we live our lives and the way we interact with other people is a changing in the value of how much I can contribute rather than how much I can gain. Imagine the difference it would make if we had that shift in our entire society. If everyone in the hospitality industry really thought, like every restaurant, every hotel, about what it would be like to be an instrument of service. If every hospital, every doctor, every nurse, every health practitioner really thought about what it would be like to be an instrument of good health. If the government and the police force and all of those thought of what it would be like to be instruments of public safety. What a different society we would live in and how it would change even our experience of small things. If we go into a restaurant and we have that gracious warmth and friendliness and be acknowledged just for our humanness, the experience would be enhanced to a point where even the food would taste better. And think about it in terms of our personal lives. If parents saw themselves as instruments to bring up the children, or spouses saw themselves as instruments to enhance each other's lives, how much would we then be willing to do? How much more would we improve our skills, our resources, our efficiency, manage our time? This richer understanding in relationships would totally bring out our potential to the maximum. The next verse in the Hanuman Chalisa, Sabaparama Tapasvi Raja Tinake Kaja Sakalata Masaja. It can be seen from the point of view that Sri Ram being the Lord of the universe, the most powerful, all knowing, even Sri Ram turns to you, or rather, you can help serve even the Lord. You carry out even His mission. We see in all religions of the world, it's not so much that the Lord needs us to carry out His mission. It's more that He gives us an opportunity to do whatever is required. The Lord can do on His own whatever needs to be done with a blink of an eye, a click of a finger, or even less than that, but creates opportunities for us to be able to serve, to be able to learn, to be able to grow. And so not that the devotee is doing the Lord a favor, but rather the Lord is doing each one of us a favor by creating environments for us to be able to contribute. There's a fascinating story in the Mahabharata. So Bhim has a son called Gatakoch, and Gatakoch has a son after that called Belasan. And he was a great warrior, and he was entrusted with a boon by Lord Shiva, where he had these powerful arrows that made him invincible. The arrows had the ability, they were three, and the first one would create a boundary around the area that he wanted to attack. The second arrow marked all the people or things that he wanted destroyed. The third would mark all those that should remain safe. And so in this way, Milasan became extremely powerful and invincible. And when Krishna heard of this boon and was talking to him, he thought he needed to test to see just if there was any way or loophole to get around this. And Krishna requested him that a particular tree, if he could use his arrows to destroy all the leaves. And when Krishna was doing that, he kept one leaf from that tree under his foot. Belasan shot the first arrow, 
and it marked all the leaves on the tree and then it pricked Krishna's foot, which meant that even Krishna couldn't hide anything from this arrow and therefore from Vilasana, which became extremely problematic because how then can Krishna ensure the safety of the Pandavas? Because Vilasana had another very interesting quirk about his personality. He had chosen that he would only ever fight for the losing side. So Krishna, seeing this as a challenge, proposed to Bilasan that if you fight always for the losing side, whoever you're fighting for will start winning. And therefore, you'll have to swap sides. Then they will start winning. And then you'll have to swap sides yet again. And in this way, the war might never end. So it might be best if you sacrifice yourself and sit this out. Vilasan considered the proposal and decided he would agree only if he could watch the entire battle. Krishna agreed and placed him at a very strategic point where he could see everything going on in the battle. Eventually, when the war was over, the Pandavas were having a little family banter about who did the most and who did the best and who was the most effective and, and strategic in the battle. And Krishna suggested, since Balasan had seen the entire battle, whereas everyone else was in the battle, but because he saw it from an outsider, maybe he would be the best person to ask. And so they go to him and they question from everyone, who do you think performed the best? And Balasan answered, I don't know what you're talking about. All I could see was the divine chakra of Lord Vishnu spinning and hitting all those that was against the side of Dharma. And the only other thing I could see was Goddess Mahakali, who had spread her tongue on the battlefield to consume all the sinners as her sacrifice. In the tradition, Kali Mata accepts the blood of the wicked so that they don't reproduce. And so this is what he saw. Anyone slayed on the battle being accepted as a sacrifice to the Divine Mother. And all those that are victorious were so because of the chakra of Lord Vishnu. Hearing this, the Pandavas realized that Lord Narayana or Vishnu and Goddess Kali were the only ones that cleansed the world through this war. And they had been mere instruments of this divine cleansing. And so if we changed our lives to think of our profession as an opportunity where we can be an instrument of peace, an instrument of love, an instrument of well-being, if we think of our relationships as opportunities for us to be instruments of love and goodness and well-being, our vision changes to enhance the society, the relationship, in that specific moment, and then most deeply, it will affect us. And the idea is there in all great religions. We see in the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi, Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light and where there is sadness, joy. So the idea of being an instrument to create peace, faith, hope, light, joy. Am I such an instrument? For I certainly can be. So if I'm not, why not? Think about it. <laughs>